The Physics of Sports. I'm Olivia Myers, a fourth year biology student. We can first use a vertical jump as a simple model. Given a certain distance of crouching, how high can we jump? Dynamics describe the acceleration, whereas kinematics tell us the takeoff speed. Once we leave the ground, we can use the conservation of mechanical energy to determine our maximum height. This shows that we can raise our center of mass as much as we crouch. So if I crouch 40 centimeters, I can go up from standing position to 40 centimeters up. Physics has set a height limit for pole vaulting. Sergei Bupka reached 6.14 meters in 1994. There was a change in the limit, and therefore the records, when pole vaulters began using carbon fiber poles rather than glass fiber or bamboo poles. Again, we can use the conservation of mechanical energy. If the initial velocity is 10 meters per second and the height, including center of mass, is 6 meters, the limit for the maximum height a pole vaulter can reach is approximately 6 meters. The long jump also has a limit, with the world record being around 8.6 meters. Projectile motion tells us that maximum range is obtained when the launch angle is 45 degrees, but long jumpers launch themselves at about 20 degrees. Launching at a 45 degree angle, the athlete would have to create a 7,000 newton force in the y direction, which would mean pushing off the ground with 10 times the force of their body weight, which is not possible. For a more realistic measure, the athlete only has to push off the ground with three times the force of their body weight to get an average force in the y direction of 2,100 newtons, which can be done at a 17 degree angle. The goal of the high jump is to pass the entire body over the bar without disturbing it, which is done by getting the center of mass as close as possible to the bar. The world record for this sport progressed until it reached 2.45 meters thanks to the Fosbury flop introduced by Dick Fosbury at the 1968 Olympics. The contact time between a tennis ball and a tennis racket is 10 milliseconds, which is actually very long. The racket recovers in 20 seconds, so the ball has left the tennis racket, leading to much energy loss and deformation. For a baseball bat, the contact time is maybe 2 milliseconds, and the bat has no recovery time due to its hard material composition. The spots on a racket include a dead spot, a node, center of percussion, and an area for the best bounce. The ball hitting the racket produces vibrations, and hitting the ball on a node will decrease the amount of vibration translated to our hands. Rolling is a summation of translation and rotation. By hitting at the COP, the racket will roll in our hands, so we only feel a small amount of force. Depending on where the ball hits on the racket, different forces will be produced in the handle. For example, at the COP, the forces going forward and backwards cancel out, whereas hitting at the tip or the throat produces more forward and backward forces respectively. On a baseball bat, it is best to hit at the sweet spot, where there will be zero vibrations. This is approximately 19 centimeters from the free end. Hollow aluminum bats have a better sweet spot than wooden bats because the hollow cylinder shape of the aluminum allows the metal to compress and transfer more energy to the ball. Wooden bats cannot compress because they are solid and can actually reduce the amount of energy the ball has. The best launch angle for a basketball is approximately 70 degrees. 50 and 30 are too short because they translate to the ball hitting the rim and bouncing off or barely going in the basket. The biceps and elbow form a type 3 lever, where the fulcrum is at one end. 8 kilograms of force must be exerted to just hold an object weighing 1 kilogram. Muscles also come in pairs, such as biceps and triceps, and are known as either agonist, who is doing the work, or antagonist, who is opposing the force. These can change based on which direction the force is being applied. As well, friction in the joints causes very low efficiency. The law of muscles is that the force produced by a muscle depends on the number of muscle fibers being activated. While the number of muscle fibers is fixed at birth, some people are stronger than others because their muscle fibers are thicker. Based on this fact, force is proportional to L squared, 
and weight is proportional to L cubed. Therefore, F is proportional to weight to the two-thirds. For most muscles that generate motion, force is roughly equal to 40 newtons per centimeter squared. I really enjoyed attending this lecture. I'm not an athlete myself, and learning the physics behind the sports scene in the Olympics, or even just during the regular sports season, left me even more in awe of these incredible athletes. And being a biology major, I was also fascinated by how the lecture connected physics with the human body.